Hello my friends, this video is the English version of the lesson taught by Dr. Juan Blues. This video is the second part of the histology lesson on epithelial tissue. Above is the link to the first video. In the previous video, we gave the definition of tissue, looked at the different sorts of epithelial tissue which are lining epithelium and glandular epithelium. We explored the most important characteristics of each one and defined their principal functions. And of these two, we are going to explore epithelial lining tissue in greater depth. We saw that epithelial lining tissue can be classified as simple epithelial tissue or stratified epithelial tissue. And these can be subclassified further according to a series of criteria. Today we will look at simple epithelial tissue, its different forms and the most common location for each one. And remember, you won't find another video on YouTube that explains it better than we do here. So, let's begin. Simple epithelia Simple squamous epithelium We can find it in the parietal layer of the Bowman's capsule in the kidney. I know that sounds really weird, but don't worry. I will explain it to you and you will see that it's not that difficult. The important thing is to visualize the structure. Look, here we have the kidney. If we zoom in, we will see the functional unit of the kidney, the nephron. This part is called the glomerulus and is ball-shaped, enveloping the anatomical structure called the Bowman's capsule. And if we observe it more closely, we can see that here we have the afferent arteriole, which supplies, and here the efferent arteriole, which takes away. And covering the Bowman's capsule on the inside, we have a single layer of epithelial cells. Simple epithelium, all with a flat shape. Simple squamous epithelium. To recap, we find it in the parietal layer of the Bowman's capsule in the kidney. Now it doesn't sound so strange, does it? Let's continue. We also find it in the pulmonary alveoli, covering them on the inside. See how inside the alveoli we have a single layer of flat cells? Simple squamous epithelium. We also have simple squamous epithelium covering the vessels of the circulatory system on the inside and covering the internal cavities that do not communicate with the outside. But in these two places, it has a particular name. The epithelial lining of the blood and lymph vessels and the heart is specifically called endothelium. Let's go to the diagram. Here we see an artery and a vein. Observe how the inside is lined with a single layer of flat cells. Simple squamous epithelium. Here it is called endothelium. And the epithelium that comes from the mesoderm and that lines the cavities that do not communicate with the outside, such as the abdominal, pleural and pericardial cavity, is called mesothelium. At the start, we established that epithelial tissue comes from the three embryonic layers. Well, that which comes from the middle layer, or mesoderm, and which lines cavities which do not communicate with the exterior, such as the abdominal, pleural and pericardial cavity, has a specific name. It is called mesothelium. Here we see the internal cavities of the body which do not communicate with the exterior and how they are lined on the inside by a simple squamous epithelium. We're going to take a closer look at some of them. Let's go to the diagram. If we look at the pericardial cavity in greater detail, here we have the heart. And if we enlarge the image in this area, this is part of the heart and this is the wall of the cavity that surrounds it. Observe how, covering the interior of the pericardial cavity, there is a single layer of flat cells, simple squamous epithelium. Here in the cavity, they are called mesothelium. And now, if we look at the cavity that houses the lungs, the pleural cavity, and we examine it in detail, we will see that lining the walls of the pleural cavity, both in the visceral pleura and the parietal pleura, there is a single layer of flat cells, simple squamous epithelium. Here, they are also called mesothelium. Okay, so now we have seen the typical locations and with illustrations so that you can understand it and remember it better. In the drawings, the shape of the cells is exaggerated so that they stand out better. They are designed to help you to learn and memorize better and they are not totally realistic drawings. Okay, let's continue. We have an exception to all of this. We established that the inside of the vessels are coated with simple squamous epithelium called endothelium. But there are some vessels, particularly venous vessels, where they are not flat. This exception is in the postcapillary venules of certain lymphatic organs, where the endothelium is cuboidal. Let's explain it with drawings so that we don't forget it. Here we have the lymphatic system drawn in green. Let's enlarge a lymph node. 
This is where the arterial blood comes in, and here is where the venous blood comes out. And in this area, where capillary exchange takes place, we see that the blood arrives, passes through the capillary, and empties into the veins. Well, in some of these very small veins called venules, before reaching the veins, the epithelia is also simple, a single layer, simple endothelium, but not flat, rather cube-shaped. These venules, which are the exception, are known as high endothelial values. And to finish, I've prepared two histological sections for when you study. This is how you will see them under the microscope. Here is the Bowman's capsule, and we can see the single layer of squamous epithelium. And here is the endothelium, which covers the inside of the vessels. One single layer, simple epithelium, with a flat shape. Cuboidal simple epithelium. We can find it in the small ducts of the excretory glands. Here we can see a gland. And observe how its excretory duct is lined with a single layer of epithelial cells with a cube shape. Cuboidal simple epithelia. We can also find them on the surface of the ovary. Here we have the female reproductive system. The uterus, the tubes and the ovaries. If we look closer, we see that, lining the internal surface of the ovary, there is a single layer of epithelial cells in the form of cubes, cuboidal simple epithelia. We will also find them in the renal tubules. Let's look at the diagram. In the nephron, specifically in the part of the tubules, lining them, we have a layer of cuboidal epithelial cells, cuboidal simple epithelia. Bear in mind that in this area, ions are absorbed and secreted to make urine. And it's useful to have just a single layer of cells, so that substances can pass through it easily. Here, we are not interested in stratified or multi-layered epithelia. We also find it in the thyroid follicles. This is the thyroid gland. If you observe, you will see that the thyroid follicles are lined on the inside by a simple layer of cube-shaped cells. Cuboidal simple epithelia. Here, I have prepared two histological sections, one of the renal tubules and another section of the thyroid follicles. And this is what they look like under a microscope. A single layer of cells, shaped like cubes. Simple columnar epithelium. Look at the drawing. Simple epithelium, because there is only one layer. And columnar, because these ones are shaped like a cylinder, or column. These can be found all along the digestive tract. In the stomach, in the small intestine, and in the colon. Let's look at the diagram. Here we can see the stomach and observe the single layer of columnar epithelial cells that line it. Simple columnar epithelium. The same thing occurs in the colon. A single layer of cylindrical cells covers its walls. Simple columnar epithelium. And now pay attention. This is the small intestine. If we zoom in to see its walls in greater detail, you will see that lining the small intestine we also have cylinder-shaped epithelial cells, but in their upper area or apical region, they have an adaptation that allows them to be more efficient in that area of the body. In the apical domain, they have digitiform, finger-shaped, cytoplasmic extensions, called microvilli. And this, as we will see later, favours the absorption process. In the diagram I showed you at the beginning, I already explained that to classify epithelia, sometimes the modifications or adaptations that cells can have in their apical area should be taken into account. We can see in the diagram that simple columnar epithelia can have a variation or a specific extra modification. They can have microvilli. Therefore, the epithelia in the small intestine have microvilli as an apical specialization, as well as goblet cells which produce mucus. Through the optic microscope, the microvilli of the intestine are called checker plate, and you will also hear them referred to as brush-edged cells. Therefore, this epithelium is classified as simple columnar epithelium with checker plate, microvilli, and goblet cells. We also find them in the fallopian tubes. The subclassification that we made with the cells of the small intestine can also be applied to the uterine tubes, since here there are columnar epithelial cells with cilia as apical specializations. If we go back to the diagram, we will see that the other apical specialization of the simple columnar epithelium are cilia. In the drawing, we can see the female reproductive system. And if we zoom in on the fallopian tubes, we can observe how the cells have short, multiple extensions in the form of tabs, and that, in this case, help the egg to move. In this area, we refer to them as simple columnar ciliated epithelium. 
Let's continue. We can also find the simple columnar ciliated epithelium in the gallbladder. Look, here we have the gallbladder. If we enlarge the image, we can observe how its walls are covered by a single layer of cells with a cylindrical shape, simple columnar epithelia. And as always, here I complete the summary with two real histological sections of the gallbladder and gut epithelium, simple epithelium, with cylinder-shaped cells. And following the order of our initial chart, the next epithelium that we have to look at is the pseudostratified epithelium. In the drawing, we can see how all of the cells rest on a basal lamina. There is only one layer, but under the microscope, we see that they have different heights and look as though there were different layers, hence the term pseudostratified. But remember that it is still a type of simple epithelia. We mainly find it in the trachea and the bronchial tree. Here we have the trachea and the bronchial tubes. If we section to look inside, we see that the entire length of the windpipe is covered with a single layer of epithelial cells, each one of a different height. In addition, as happened with the uterine tubes, these also have specialised their apical region to form cilia. In the case of the fallopian tubes, we saw how these facilitated the movement of the egg. Here, their function is to help move the mucus that is produced. We are talking about ciliated pseudostratified epithelia. The other place where we see pseudostratified epithelia is in the epididymis and the vas deferens. This is the male reproductive system. These are the testicles, the epididymis and the vas deferens. If we take a closer look, we will see that the epithelial cells which line the epididymis and the vas deferens are all different sizes, and that in this case they also have a different modification to the apical region. Longer extensions with ramifications which lack mobility. These are called stereocilia, and we will study them later. In this case, the epithelial cells line the duct and also, with their apical modifications, help the sperm to mature. We are talking about pseudostratified epithelium with stereocilia. When you study the initial chart, I already explained that the pseudostratified epithelia can have cilia in the case of the trachea and the bronchial tubes, and stereocilia in the epididymis and the vas deferens. Let's continue. We established that these cells are different heights, but looking closely, if we had to compare them with a geometric shape, they are shaped more like a cylinder than a cube. This is why you can also find them as ciliated columnar pseudostratified epithelia, with goblet cells for respiratory epithelium, and columnar pseudostratified epithelia with stereocilia for the vas deferens. And here I have prepared a real histological section of the respiratory epithelium which we classify as ciliated columnar pseudostratified epithelia. And let's move on. Now we turn our attention to the epithelial tissues that are actually made up of several layers or cell strata. The stratified epithelia. Stratified epithelia. But since this is getting a bit long and I don't want to exhaust you, we'll leave it until the next video. Looking forward to seeing you in the next chapter, Epithelial Tissue Part 3. Goodbye for now.